Hello and welcome back. In this course, we will explore the process of running Docker applications using custom non-root users for enhanced security in your Laravel environments. By the end of this course, you will be able to understand the basic fundamentals of user management for both your host and your Docker containers. You will also be able to establish a secure Docker environment for your Laravel application, resolve any permission related errors effectively, and you will also be able to create custom users and groups tailored to your application needs. Running containers as the root user presents a significant security risk for your server. This essentially grants the potential attackers unrestricted access to your server resources and commands, enabling them to do literally anything like altering your server configuration, implementing backdoors, or even executing scripts. To solve this, we're going to disable the root user for our server and create a new one with limited access instead. To get started, first let's go ahead and open our terminal and we're going to create ourselves a new project folder. I'm going to call mine example. Let's go ahead and go inside our new project folder and you want to clone my GitHub project. So I have already set up a Laravel with Docker. So what you want to do is you want to Google emad, E-M-A-D, Zamut, Z-A-A-M-O-U-T, GitHub. And you want to go ahead and click on the first link. In here, you want to go to repositories. You want to find this repository, Course Material, Laravel Docker Security Custom User Setup. I have added this in the description, so you can find the link there. And you want to go ahead and copy this URL on the top. Back to our terminal. I'm just going to do git clone my URL, and I'm going to do it inside my current directory. Let's go ahead and do ls, and you should see this project. I'm going to just open it in VS Code. All right, so... For this project, just a quick overview, this is an empty Laravel project. I have here set up Nginx with PHP FPM to run our Docker application. And also, like we covered this in our last tutorials, so nothing here should be new. One thing though, I do have a make file here, and this just supposed to make your life easier. It has all the commands that I'll be running here. So if I do like make init, you can see all the commands in here. So this one's running make fresh. And that's running these commands. And um, basically, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now for the Docker Compose file, we have two containers, API and database. The database is using MySQL. The, the API is using Nginx with PHP FPM. And for the Docker file, you can see it's pretty straightforward. We're just installing and configuring Nginx. And one last thing to note is inside our Docker file here, you can find our Nginx files our PHP FPM configuration files. And here you can find our supervisor configuration. And that's basically where we're setting these uh, programs, PHP FPM, Nginx. If you're running crons and stuff like that, you would usually have them in here. Inside our terminal, let's go ahead and just start our project. If this is your first time running it, you can write make init. Once that's done, you should have all the Docker containers up and running. So let's go ahead and open Docker. In here, let's go to containers and you can see this is my example. So let's try to open this on our local host. And the first thing we can see here is we have a permission error for the log file. And this is exactly what we're going to be fixing. This part is optional, but since we're going to be rebuilding our Docker images many times, it won't be feasible to have it download all our server every time we rebuild it. It's going to take a lot of time. To fix this, let's build a base image. This should take just a minute. Let's go ahead and open our terminal. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it example base image. You can call this whatever you like. And let's go ahead and open this in VS Code. Now, back to our old project, I'm just going to minimize this and put it here, and I'm going to put these side by side. I'm just going to copy our make file quickly, and I'm going to copy our Docker file. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it in here. Let's open this quickly. Let's go to the Docker file, and we basically want to erase everything right under the work there. Now, we're going to give our base image a name. I'm just going to call it example base image. Let's copy this in our make file. Let's just erase everything right under help. Let's create a new command. Let's call it build. And let's say build image. Now in here, I'm just going to run docker build. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it example base image. 
And I'm gonna build the current Docker file in this directory. Let's open the terminal. And let's run make build. Once this is done, go ahead and open Docker. You wanna go to images and you wanna make sure it's here. You can see it, example base image. I'm just gonna copy this name here and let's go ahead and go back to our project. And in our main project, let's go to our Docker file. Let's erase this and let's write here the name that we copied, example base image. Open the terminal again and write make build. This will build our container and you can see it's going to use our base image and that's going to be a lot faster. Before we start creating our new user, it's important we understand what the UID and GID mean. So the UID is your user ID and GID is your group ID. These are identifiers in Unix-like operating systems that uniquely identify users and groups. To find your user UID and GID, let's go ahead and open our terminal. I'm just going to clear this and you want to write the word ID. Here you can see all your users and you can see their UID and GIDs. So I am currently inside EMAD. This is my UID 1000, GID 1000. Usually users start off 1000. These users exist on my host machine. This is where I'm running Docker. Now, if you do Docker compose PS, we're going to SSH into our API container. So I'm just gonna do Docker, execute minus IT. We call the API and let's do SH. In here, I'm going to write ID. And you can see here, root is zero. That's usually where they start off. Any other custom user starts off by 1000. So you have here root and that's it. Now, this is really important, guys. If you take a look here, you can see our values. Here is zero. And this is the current user inside our Docker image. Root, UID zero, GID zero. On our host machine, our UID and GIDs are 1000. This is important because Docker containers run processes with the same user and group IDs as the host. If these don't match, file permissions and access control mechanisms will not work as expected, leading to errors like permission denied or file not found, and exactly like what we have in here. Now, of course, if you were to run inside our root user here instead of emad, this will work. But of course, that's not secure and... Um, the whole purpose of this course is we're going to create a new user with the same UID and GID as your host machine. Usually it's a thousand and any other user after that increments by one. So you can see here the Docker user 1001. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a new user. So I'm going to do it right under where we set the work directory. Let's add the first command run add group with the flag system. We're going to set the GID, we said 1000, and we're going to call our new group, custom group. You need a group so you can assign it to the user. User has to belong to a group. Now you're going to create a new user. We write run, add user. We're going to do the system flag. We're going to write in group. We're going to give it the custom group. We're going to set the UID to 1000, and we're going to call ours custom user. You can change these names later, but this should be enough for now. To avoid potential permission errors, we will need to adjust the file permissions and ownerships for our project to use our new user that we created. So if you scroll down here, you can see here where we copy the application source code into the container. And here we're going to add permission for our user and group. So we're going to set custom user, custom group, and these will be the file owners inside our container. Now our next command, just in case, we're going to run chown again. Is going to be recursive so we want to set all the files ownerships to our custom user and custom group that we just created inside our app folder the app folder is inside our container basically contains all these files so this is just in case to get our laravel project working we need to give write permission for our public folder so i'm going to run chmod plus w for write permission for app public folder to ensure our Laravel application can communicate with the system files, we will need to change the file ownership to our custom user and custom group for the var and the run folders. chown minus r custom user custom group for the var folder and for the run folder. 
Now let's just build this. Let's do make fresh. So the make fresh command that I added in the make file, it just stops your containers, rebuilds them and starts them again. And you can see our commands are executing in here. Now let's go ahead and SSH inside our container. You can do the docker execute minus it sh command or you can just write make SSH. I added a command for that. In here, you want to do ls minus la. If you did it right, this is what you should see. Your custom user here and your custom group here for all these files. Let's do it for the var folder. And you should see it here. And for the run folder, you should see it here as well. This is Nginx. Now we are going to need to configure Nginx and PHP FPM to use our new custom user instead of the root user. So our first step is, let's scroll up. We're going to do this right under here, set up Nginx. So here I'm going to add a new comment and I'm going to say, set Nginx user permissions. And I'm going to run three commands. So the first one, run chown minus r custom user colon custom group. And I'm just going to copy paste this two times. Okay, the first file is going to be our PHP FPM file. If you scroll up right here, this one, let's copy this whole folder and let's add it here. This is the second one. Well, let's just do it up to the engine X because it's recursive. It's going to do it for all the folders inside. And the last one, this one here is for engine X log files. Now we're going to instruct engine X and PHP FPM servers to utilize our new user by updating their configuration files. I already have these configuration files here. So you want to go to Docker. Let's do the PHP one first. Let's go to here. PHP FPM dot configuration. You want to scroll down here. See where you have user and group. This is the server user and group that's going to be running. We want to change this to our custom user and this one to our custom group. Now this is for PHP FPM. Let's do engine X. So inside your Docker folder, engine X, you have your engine X configuration file here, right on the top. See where it says user WW data. Let's change this. We're going to write custom user and custom group. And our final step is to update our supervisor configuration file to run these services as our new user. So in here, you should see this folder inside called supervisor. Let's go inside here. And I already left these notes here. So this file is configuring our services in our server. Let's just uncomment these. And we're going to change this to custom user. Let's just copy this and paste it inside our PHP FPM and our engine X. Let's just go ahead and do make fresh again inside our terminal. Now our last step before we rebuild our containers, let's go back to our Docker file. Let's scroll down right from right here before we install composer. Let's just switch our containers to use our new user. So I'm going to write here user custom user, and this will automatically log us in as our new user. Let's go ahead and do make fresh. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Now, if you see this error for the storage logs, all of a sudden, you can either change the file ownership or just delete it from here. Let the service create it. I'm going to run make fresh again. So after we deleted that file, it worked because the service recreated it. And if you're curious why the log file is running on build is because inside our routes file inside web, I just added test log here. Let's just go ahead and go back to our browser and just test this out quickly. I'm just going to refresh our page and it looks like here, no application encryption key specified. You might not see this error, but if you do, sure, create generate key here, refresh and you can see it worked. Let's go and check our log file quickly. And you can see here, test, test, no application key. So it's writing to the log, so it's working. This is going to be our last step. We need to disable the Ute user login. To do this, let's go ahead and go to our Docker file. In here, let's go right on top of entry point here. I'm just going to add two commands. Run pass wd minus l root. This will disable the password. I'm going to run another one. User mod s. I'm going to set this user to the no login one. So I'm going to do user s bin no login. 
and this is for our root user now let's just do make fresh one more time actually if you see this permission error let's just copy this so you're getting permission denied you cannot do this of course because we're using our new custom user you have to do this before we switch to our user now let's do make fresh now looks like this is done i'm just gonna do make ssh in here i'm just gonna maximize this one and let's first do id you can see this is our new user id 1000 custom group 1000 it matches our current user in our host machine so that's why you can see this page is loading and you're not getting permission errors another thing to double check let's go ahead and write ps aux so this is going to show us all our running processes on our server this is what you should see you should see your custom user and the processes that's running for that user custom user if you see something like root you probably missed something out Thank you for watching guys. If you found this tutorial useful, give it a like. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next tutorial.